Hello everyone, welcome to E3 Studios, and today we are going to have a look at Kerbal Space Program, and I'm basically just covering a live stream I did a while ago, and just super cutting it down for you, so enjoy the video, and if you hear me talking to stream chat or anything, that's what I'm doing, I'm not going mad and talking to myself, and yeah, uh, enjoy the video, I hope you do uh, like the Kerbal Space Program update that came out, but otherwise I'll leave it to the commentary I had in the stream. See you at the end of the video. Yeah, well, I'm, that's the point, Bazu. I don't want to make any more mistakes. Um, so, yay. Now, mistakes will be made in Kerbal Space Program, that's for sure. Um, so, we're heading up. This thing is very fast. I just want to point that out. Like, we are going incredibly fast. Um, these two solid rocket boosters. I hope the actual probe's inside. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, so our gravity turn isn't quite, uh, perfect. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you can. Um, separation. That was good separation. What are we looking at? Okay, we're looking good. It's not quite on target, but like, it's not bad. I will go off a little bit. No, that's further the wrong way. Never mind. This way. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna just head towards the equator. Okay, we're a little bit high up, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna like point us towards the ground now um, and bring us back towards the orbit we want to be in. Oh, okay, cool. Main engine cutoff complete. We're gonna point prograde, separate the fairings, and separate from the rest of the vehicle. Tap is right. little upper stage. That's a lot of delta V for a tiny little upper stage like this. The probe must be quite light. Right, so if this goes green, you know it's right. Oh, it was close. It was close. Okay. Um, our periapsis is 85, which is pretty good. Uh, and obviously our periapsis is a little bit too high, but we'll fix that if we come round to here, but first we're going to deploy our solar panels so we don't run out of electric charge. Where is the spacecraft gone? So let's do solar panels. Because I would really like to not run out of electric charge. All right. Oh, right, because the, the real Rosetta mission apparently, like, they flew out and then they came back to Earth and used Earth's gravity to push them towards the comet a couple times, and then eventually they got to the comet. But we're going to do a direct transfer because, well, it's faster. Okay, so that's a lot of, um, a long way out, but we'll try. All right, so we're at the right inclined orbit because the comet's orbit is inclined, as you can see, it's that white line there. Oh, do I don't have my cursor on. I should probably turn my cursor on. There we go. Stop burning. And wait a very long time. For hopefully, a successful intercept. It doesn't really matter too much. Yes, it's fine. That's fine. It's close enough. Are we in the sun for this? No, we're not. Look at that. Bright nozzle. So this is the Poodle engine. Um, but they changed it because originally... Oh, it's a stage separation. Um, 
the Poodle engine originally had two nozzles, well no, it had one and then they had two in the next update and then now they've given us an option to choose between one or two nozzles because it's the best nozzle for this mission and the actual Ariane 5 had one nozzle so that's why they did that. Luckily this tiny little engine we have on here is quite slow which is a good thing because we can be quite accurate with our orbit. So what I might actually do when we get to about 50 meters per second left on our uh, maneuver, I might actually turn the maneuver off and just hold stable and then just try and match it up manually. So we're just going to keep burning. Luckily these are throttleable, so... I'm going to cut it off as soon as we get to within, well, I'd say 50,000. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, well, we'll we'll fix it on the way. I feel like just flying target and seeing what happens. Because if I just fly, there we go, and now that's, that's close to... That. So if I just... Can I bring it within the right distance? It's going to be crazy, but... So it'll be behind us. They can catch us up if we go that way. Then we use too much fuel. Great. I think I may have managed to fail the Rosetta mission uh, because even if I could get within five kilometers, I would, uh, well, not be able to zero out velocity because I don't won't have enough fuel, and I probably won't have enough in the science equipment stuff as well. It looks like if I just go full thrust towards the comet right now, I might be able to get close enough. Maybe. But this is basically just throwing all my fuel into a very close pass. And then... How do I get closer to this? And I'll have just enough fuel to uh, probably adjust it enough to crash into this thing. But we'll approach it so fast that uh, I fear we won't see it for very long. Because our approach speed will be 443 meters per second, so we'll see it, and then we won't. <laughs> Point one, got it. Okay, that was the tiniest burn ever. We'll probably get our message saying, "Hey, you, uh, you're close," and then there it is. Okay, so it's there. Um, It is actually there. There we go. Heading towards us at great speed. Let's do cinematic flyby of a comet. But this is getting very, very close to us. Very, very fast. Point one should mean that will hit this thing. We're going to get our confirmation confirmation message uh, message saying that we are within. Now you need to lower your velocity to uh, relative to the comet. No. <laughs> uh oh, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. Oh, that was 
Very close. Okay. Um, that was very cool as well, though. Like, that's really the closest, fastest intercept I've ever done. Um, without actually docking to something. So, let's go back to the quick save because we can try and actually crash into this thing. Come on, come on, come on. And in typical Kerbal fashion, we have succeeded. Uh, and in, well, succeeded in blowing something up. So I decided to also quickly do a proper mission of this, which has been recorded. So I'm going to show that in the background super quickly for the end of the mission. And that is just what is supposed to happen once we got to the asteroid. If I saved enough fuel on ascent, it was very easy to do the second time around. So I think it's very much worth trying out yourself. But yeah, there we go. So if you enjoyed, did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. There's a Discord server below if you'd like to join that and join some community events. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.